Hello friends, myself Dr. Nandukumar Raubawale from College of Engineering Gamba Jogai is going to deal with fluid mechanics. So, in previous lecture we have seen, we have studied some numericals on viscosity, surface tension and capillarity. Today we are going to discuss about the vapor pressure, cavitation, fluid pressure at a point, Pascal's law and pressure variation in a fluid at rest and then the pressures that is uh, the definition of gauge pressure, absolute pressure, then vacuum pressure, atmospheric pressure, uh, what these pressures are that we are going to study in detail. So today we see this vapor pressure and cavitation, what this vapor pressure is and what is the cavitation. Now as we know uh, for example if we consider a pan and in which uh, we have a water so this water if heated if it is heated then it starts to boil initially if we heat it then it starts to boil at 100 degree celsius and at 100 degree celsius this water gets converted into vapor so at atmospheric pressure, so pressure is atmospheric pressure, at atmospheric pressure this water starts to boil at 100 degrees Celsius and gets converted into vapor. So if uh, this water is uh, boiled or heated in a closed container, then the vapor which is formed will accumulate above this surface of water. And the pressure exerted by this vapor is known as a vapor pressure. So now uh, there are uh, two methods to get this vapor. So by keeping pressure constant, if we heat this <coughs> liquid, then this liquid starts to boil at 100 degrees Celsius, that is at saturation temperature, and gets converted into vapor. But if we have a closed container in which if we store some liquid, if we store some liquid in this closed container say for example this liquid is at 20 degrees celsius and if we create vacuum somehow if we are going to remove air present in this container by using vacuum pump so this so that the pressure falls below the vapor pressure of a liquid so here at 100 degrees celsius vapor pressure is atmospheric pressure but here if the temp at temperature 20 degrees celsius if we create vacuum here if we reduce the pressure above this liquid or water so when this pressure reaches to the vapor pressure so this liquid or water which is there in a closed container starts to boil automatically and gets converted into vapor so this phenomena will occur automatically when we reduce pressure of this liquid so this pressure when reaches to the vapor pressure of this liquid or uh, falls below the vapor pressure at that time this uh, water will start to boil at a temperature of 20 degrees celsius even so this phenomena uh, or the pressure at which this liquid starts to boil or gets converted into vapor is known as a <coughs> vapor pressure. Now let us consider a pipe of varying cross section. So when this liquid passed through this pipe of varying cross section, this is going to again increase this cross section so when liquid is passed through this uh, pipe of varying cross section so when there is a larger diameter d1 when there is a larger diameter so pressure is uh, higher so when it is passed through the pipe of a smaller diameter so when this diameter gets reduced to small d so absolutely the velocity naturally the velocity increases and pressure is going to decrease so 
while uh, flowing this liquid or water through various cross sections if the pressure of liquid reduces below <coughs> or equal to the vapor pressure so this liquid passing through this uh, pipe having smaller diameter gets evaporated automatically and there will be a formation of bubble in this liquid so there will be vapor present in this liquid flowing through this pipe because the diameter has uh, decreased with decrease in the diameter velocity increases and pressure is going to fall so when this pressure falls to the vapor pressure of liquid or below the vapor pressure of liquid automatically this liquid starts to evaporate when this liquid is passed again into the another cross section where the pressure is very high at that time these bubbles start to explode or collapse and due to collapsing of these bubbles in this liquid so there will be a high pressure automatically developed and this high pressure which is developed because of collapsing of these bubbles present in this uh, liquid or water is going to erode the surface of pipe in contact with this liquid so the surface is eroded or cavities are formed and that process of forming cavities or erosion of the surface of pipe where the bubbles are going to collapse is known as a cavitation process so uh, this cavitation process is nothing but uh, the very high pressure is developed by collapsing of bubbles uh, that the material from adjoining boundaries so this is the adjoining boundary gets eroded and cavities are formed and that process of forming these cavities is known as a cavitation so very first what is a vapor pressure vapor pressure is nothing but the pressure at which this liquid starts to uh, get converted into vapor so here if we reduce the pressure of liquid uh, keeping co temperature constant without heating if we reduce this pressure of a liquid to the pressure vapor pressure of liquid <coughs> automatically this liquid starts to vaporize and gets converted into vapor so this process of forming vaporization is at a <coughs> vapor pressure of liquid so if this liquid is uh, flowing through a pipe if this liquid is considered to be flowing uh, through the pipeline or the system where the pressure is going to vary so if it is passed through the pipe and the suddenly if the cross section is going to reduce the pressure is going to fall so if this pressure uh, which falls is below <coughs> the vapor pressure or equal to the vapor pressure so the liquid starts to uh, evaporate and the bubbles are going to be formed so when these bubbles move along with this liquid in a region where there is a very high pressure so these bubbles are going to collapse and the collapsing of bubbles is going to create a sudden very high pressure in this region and due to very high pressure created by collapsing of bubbles is going to erode the surface of adjoining boundary and that uh, cavity which is created is uh, uh, known as the process of cavitation or the phenomena of creating cavities because of collapsing of bubbles and producing a very high pressure which erodes the adjoining surface is known as a process of cavitation now coming to this next <coughs> fluid pressure at a point in a static fluid so when we see that uh, there is a small area uh, this is the liquid in which we consider a small area <coughs> da da uh, be the small area in the liquid da is a small area in large mass of fluid now when this fluid is stationary and let df be the force acting on this small area let df be the force acting on the area or small area da 
इन नॉर्मल डायरेक्शन इन नॉर्मल डायरेक्शन से डी एफ इज द फोर्स देन द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ प्रेशर इज गिवन बाय और द रेशियो ऑफ रेशियो ऑफ डी एफ बाई डी एज नोन एज इंटेंसिटी ऑफ प्रेशर इंटेंसिटी ऑफ प्रेशर और सिंपली इज नोन एज ए प्रेशर so this can be written as p is equal to df divided by da so now if this force f is acting uniformly throughout this liquid if the force total force f is acting uniformly over this force uh, sorry in this uh, liquid over a surface area say for example the base area of this container is a then the pressure at any point is given by pressure at any point is given by f divided by a so if the force is acting uniformly over the area a then we can call this as a force divided by area f divided by a that is force divided by area so this force can be given as force is equal to p into a so this is nothing but the force or pressure force we call this as a pressure force so this force is known as pressure force pressure force f so the unit of pressure p is given in various units like kgf per meter square or kgf per centimeter square in mks units whereas newton per meter square or newton per mm square in si unit pressure is measured newton per meter square or newton per <coughs> mm square in a si unit that already you know it is similar to the unit of stress <coughs> now we'll move to this uh, next aspect that is pascal's law so what this pascal's law is going to state is <coughs> the pressure or intensity of pressure as we have seen at a any point given in a static fluid static fluid means a stationary fluid is equal in all directions let us consider a container in which the liquid is there so if you have a pressure gauge and if you measure pressure in this pressure of this liquid here so it will measure some value so if you measure pressure here so it will give some value of pressure if you measure pressure here it will give some value so pressure gauge 1 <coughs> pressure gauge 2 pressure gauge 3 so all pressure gauges are going to read same value or is are going to show same pressure that is nothing but pressure intensity in all directions in a fluid is same or it is equal so it states that the pressure intensity of a pressure at a point in a static fluid is equal in all directions so if you select a point and if you measure pressure at this point using various pressure gauges so pressure at this point in all directions x y z is going to be same now let us consider a small element of a fluid which is stationary now small element a b c is considered so in this element a b c let us consider the faces or a wedge shape element wedge shape element in the sense this is this kind of element of a liquid okay so this kind of 
unit is taken so this <coughs> has got uh, dy as a vertical distance and dx as the horizontal distance along x direction and this inclined distance is given as a ds whereas this width of this is taken as a one unit is taken as one unit so now uh, we will consider that the fluid element is very small in direction x y and z it is a very small element in direction x y and z <coughs> now considering uh, this arbitrary element we can uh, write here that the forces acting on this element are uh, because of two things one is the <coughs> pressure forces acting normal to the surface and the self weight of this element say for example x px is the force acting on this surface a b whereas py is the force acting on surface pressure uh, force uh, pressure acting on this surface ac and uh, ds is the <coughs> sorry pz is the uh, force acting on the pressure acting on this surface pc so we will uh, have two things <coughs> this angle uh, we are going to call as theta so this is angle theta <coughs> now we see the forces acting on element r element r there are two kinds of forces number one first force is pressure force normal to the surfaces normal to the surfaces and second one is the self weight of element <coughs> in the vertical direction weight of the element in vertical direction so weight acts at center of gravity in downward direction so now the px b the pressure in x direction so this px is the pressure in x direction py is the pressure in y direction y direction and pz is the pressure acting in s direction we call this as a s direction say pz is pressure in z direction or s direction now we can find out the force acting on this surface a b so this is the surface if we take this wedge shape like this so this is a b sorry so this is point a b and c so here this we call as a dy distance dy and this is this distance is one unit 
so we can find out this surface area as dy into 1 dy into 1 is the area area into force acting on this is pressure acting on this is px so into px pressure into area gives us force so force on surface ab force on surface ab is given by <coughs> px where px is the pressure acting into area area of this surface ab is given by dy into 1 so this thickness we are going to consider as <coughs> 1 so here dy into 1 <coughs> similarly the four sound surface AC is given if we consider a uh, bottom of this wedge shape so this is point A B C so this surface over this from bottom so pressure is acting py so pressure py is acting pressure into area of this this width is one <coughs> and this distance a to c is dx so pressure acting on surface ac sorry this is huh, py is the force into dx into one so this area is this is one and this is dx into py so we can say that the force acting on surface ac is py into dx into 1 so force acting on the surface bc force acting on the surface bc bc is given as <coughs> Ez into ds into 1. So if we take this surface, the area of this surface is ds into 1. So this is the rectangle and the force acting is Ez. Ez ds into 1. So now the self weight of this uh, element of fluid self weight of this element of fluid we have to find out so weight of element can be given by mass of element mass into acceleration due to gravity so mass can be written as <coughs> volume into mass density and this acceleration due to gravity so now to find out this volume volume of this wedge so we can find out uh, the triangle area of triangle as 1 by 2 into ac into ab into its width is 1 so that gives us volume area of triangle we can find out so area of triangle a b so we can find out area and its thickness is one unit so this thickness is one unit so first we find out area into thickness so area we know half ac into ab into thickness is one divided by two so volume we can write as <coughs> so in place of volume we can write as half ac into ab into one into rho into <coughs> so now here we can write this as half ac ac means this distance ac is nothing but dx distance ab means dy into rho into g so we write this as equation number one 
we read this as equation number two we read this as equation number three and this we call as equation number four so now we have four equations uh, where a rho is density of fluid now resolving forces acting weight is acting in the downward direction so this force fx is acting from left to right in horizontal direction force fy is acting in the upward direction whereas weight w is acting in the downward direction and this force fz we call this as a force fz <coughs> is acting perpendicular to the surface pc so we have four uh, kind of forces so this force on surface ab we call as fx then force on surface ac we call as fy then force on z uh, we call this as a fz and this we call as a weight w so in this way we have obtained fx fy fz and w now resolving these forces in x direction and y direction we will see so resolving these forces first we write fx fy fz and w patients will uh, carry forward so fx is equal to px dy1 px dy1 is not required fy is py into dx equation number one equation number two dy into dx pz into ds pz into ds equation number three and weight self weight is given by one by two dx dy then rho g this is equation number four <coughs> so now fx is this force fy is this force vertical force and f z is inclined force so first resolving the forces in x direction we get what we are going to get is so this force already is in x direction <coughs> fx is in x direction minus fz if we resolve along this x direction it will be in opposite direction therefore minus so if we resolve it so this angle will be theta so this is total is 90 so here this will be 90 minus theta so this will be again theta <coughs> <coughs> so this angle is theta now uh, fz cos theta is equal to zero so force in x direction and uh, from left to right and force from right to left uh, will be in equilibrium so it will be equal or will nullify each other therefore this element will be stationary or stable so now we can uh, write this as fx is px <coughs> dy minus fz is pz <coughs> ds cos theta is equal to zero so now from this figure we can see that is ds cos theta ds cos theta from figure <coughs> ds cos theta so if we take this as the ds distance and if we reduce it ds cos theta along this vertical direction so this will give us a b so that is nothing but equal to <coughs> ab ds cos theta 
this distance is ds and if we resolve this ds along this vertical direction it will be ds cos theta and ds cos theta is equal to ab and ab is nothing but dy <coughs> that is going to be dy therefore this above equation we can write px dy minus of ds cos theta is written as pz this is written as dy is equal to 0 so px into dy is equal to <coughs> pz dy so dy dy gets cancelled we get px is equal to pz <coughs> as equation number 5 that is the pressure in x direction is equal to pressure in <coughs> z direction so similarly resolving forces <coughs> in y direction we get so in y direction we have this fy force and self weight w and component of this fz so <coughs> fy minus we have this fz component of fz fz sin theta component of this fz along vertical direction fz sin theta <coughs> this is acting in downward direction this force is acting in upward direction so fy is positive component of fz in downward direction is negative minus self weight is acting in downward direction w and this must be equal to <coughs> 0 so fy is nothing but py dx minus fz is nothing but pz ds and this sin theta as it is fz value is pz ds into sin theta <coughs> minus W is 1 by 2 dx dy rho g this must be equal to <coughs> 0 so from this what we can write is ds sin theta ds sin theta is if we take this ds if we resolve this along horizontal it will be equal to ac <coughs> ds sin theta is equal to ac and this ac is nothing but dx so here this ds sin theta can be taken as dx so py dx minus pz into dx <coughs> minus of of dx dy rho g is equal to 0 so now what we can assume is the weight of this small component is negligible a very small element we are going to consider so this term becomes 0 so self weight of this element small element of fluid is going to be 0 <coughs> neglecting the weight of weight of element we get py dx minus pz dx py dx minus pz dx is equal to 0 or py dx is equal to pz dx so dx dx gets cancelled therefore we can write here py is equal to pz so now what is the equation number 5 and 6 what equation number 5 says and what equation number 6 says px is equal to pz and this equation number 6 says py is equal to pz therefore <coughs> equation number 5 says px is equal to pz 
and equation number six says py is equal to pz equation number six so from equation number five and six we can say that px equal to py is equal to <coughs> pz so this is equation number seven six so equation number seven says that the pressure at any point in x y and z direction in a static fluid is equal <coughs> in all direction it is equal so this is the conclusion of pascal's law so pascal's law states that the pressure intensity at a point in all directions is going to be same <coughs> so now <coughs> pressure variation in a fluid at rest that we want to see so this is the pascal's law which helps us to consider the pressure to be uniform in all directions at a point in a static fluid so now we will see <coughs> the pressure variation in a fluid at rest so in this fluid so from this figure we can see we are going to consider a small element a b c d so this small element a b c d we are going to consider which has got delta z as the height delta z is the height and this surface a b is nothing but small area d delta a so let delta a be the cross sectional area of element delta a is the cross sectional area area of the element <coughs> now delta z will be the height of fluid element delta z is the height of fluid element whereas <coughs> p is the pressure on face a b let a b is the face and p is the pressure acting on this s a b and let z be the distance of this element from z is the distance of this element from free surface of fluid so z is the distance of <coughs> distance of element fluid element from free surface <coughs> now we will consider uh, the four things that the forces acting on this element which are the forces acting on this element so very first <coughs> one is the force acting on this surface ab from upward direction another force is acting because of fluid below this element in the upward direction whereas self weight of this uh, fluid element acting in the downward direction so very first the pressure force on surface ab the pressure force on surface ab if we consider surface AB which we can take as <coughs> pressure into area the so pressure P into small area that is delta A acting perpendicular to the surface AB so this force is acting perpendicular to this surface AB in downward direction this is acting in the downward direction so we call this as equation number one then the pressure force acting on surface CD
ಸಿ ಇಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ನೌ ದ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಿ ಡಿ ಪಿ ಟಿ ಜೆಟ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಇಂಟು ಡೆಲ್ಟಾ ಸೆಟ್ ಆರ್ ಪಿ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೆಲ್ಟಾ ಪಿ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಫೋರ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಇಂಟು ಏರಿಯಾ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಪಿ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೋ ಆಫ್ ಪಿ ಡಿವೈಡ್ ಬೈ ಡೋ ಜೆಟ್ ಡೆಲ್ಟಾ ಜೆಟ್ ಇಂಟು ಡೆಲ್ಟಾ ಎ ಈಸ್ ದ ಏರಿಯಾ ವಿ ಕಾಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಇಕ್ವೇಷನ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಟು so this is the force acting in the upward direction and this earlier force was acting in the downward direction so pressure there is a pressure difference here is the pressure p and at this level the pressure is p plus of do p by do z into delta z so that is p plus of dp small change in the pressure so if here is the pressure p here the pressure will be p plus of dp <coughs> but this pressure is acting in the upward direction because this fluid element is stationary or stable it is in equilibrium when it is in equilibrium the vertical forces must be equal so now uh, one more force is acting because of its self weight self weight is acting from at its center of gravity in the downward direction so self weight of element weight of element is given by density <coughs> rho into acceleration due to gravity this gives us weight density into volume volume of this element so this is rho into g into volume of this element is given by delta a into delta <coughs> so cross section area is delta a and height is delta z so this gives us volume <coughs> the pressure force on surface bc and ad are equal and opposite here the pressure force acting on the surface ad and surface bc are in horizontal direction and if this force acting in x direction in from left to right is equal to the force acting from right to left then this element will be in equilibrium otherwise <coughs> if the forces in horizontal direction are going to imbalance this element is likely to move in horizontal direction so as it is in equilibrium that is the force acting from left to right is equal to force acting from right to left that is force acting on surface ad is equal to force acting on surface bc so now we have this equation number so now we can write that the vertical forces for uh, the element to be in equilibrium the vertical forces must be balanced so force acting from top to bottom that is upper force that is p into delta a that is p into delta a for equilibrium we can write this as for equilibrium for equilibrium of <coughs> fluid element the vertical force delta pa is acting from top to bottom and the force acting from bottom to top upward direction is this <coughs> p plus of do p by do z and delta z into delta a plus of the self weight is acting in the downward direction so rho g delta a delta z and this must be equal to zero <coughs> now if we simplify this p delta a minus p into delta a if we multiply both these elements of this bracket by delta a minus dp do p by do z delta z into delta a plus of rho p delta a delta z is equal to 0 so 
so these two gets cancelled p delta a minus plus p delta a is going to get cancelled so what is going to remain is minus rho p by dou z delta z delta a plus of a rho g delta a delta z is equal to <coughs> or if we transfer this term on the right hand side so it becomes negative 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 becomes positive so therefore we can write rho p by dou z <coughs> delta z delta a is equal to rho g delta a delta z so delta a delta z delta a delta a delta z delta z gets cancelled so we are going to have dou p by dou z is equal to rho into g so now we can write this uh, rho g as uh, weight density w <coughs> or uh, we can write this as integral of dou p or dp integral of dp is equal to integral of rho g pz or this can be written as p is equal to rho g z so this is a very important thing that we can see pressure intensity at any point <coughs> in a static fluid is the function of its depth so uh, it is uh, going to be uh, depend on density and uh, acceleration due to gravity so g is going to be constant and the rho is also going to be constant for a, any fluid therefore so the pressure intensity is directly proportional to z whereas these two things are constant for a given fluid so pressure head z is called as a pressure head so p is proportional to z and z is known as pressure head known as pressure head <coughs> z is known as pressure head so this is this plays a very important role that is p is equal to <coughs> rho g z so now if you see <coughs> a tank so the pressure exerted at one point pressure exerted at another point <coughs> by a static fluid is going to be different so if this distance z is small and if this distance z is going to increase so pressure exerted by self weight of this liquid is going to vary so pressure at the bottom of tank is higher than the pressure at the upper level of this <coughs> tank or <coughs> at the higher level <coughs> so this is the important derivation that we have seen that is pressure intensity is going to be depend on the depth of point from the free surface of liquid so tomorrow we will see the re remaining things that is absolute pressure, atmospheric pressure, gauge pressure, vacuum pressure. So today we stop here.